How do you think you've gone over the last couple of games? I've enjoyed it. Uh, two completely different games, playing the same role, uh, histing away. I've done my job, the ball has come to my feet, laying it off, uh, set up the others and, and that's what he wanted really, someone to, to link up play. Uh, whereas Tuesday night, uh, they've brought their tactics of just slugging his shit, slugging his shit about and uh, fighting us and completely different game for us. You know, I had a bloke behind me and a bloke in front of me, both bigger than me, uh, and it was just a fight for me really. So. I've tried to do what I can, but you know we've ended up cancelling each other out. We've played good football, but we've we've come away with a point. So frustrating as well to come away from a point. You know that's that's yeah. only one defeat in eight games. There should be a lot of confidence in that side. However, that yeah. said, the league position doesn't you know represent that yeah. that run of games, does it? It's consistency again, isn't it? Uh, like we say, disappointed from a point. Uh, You'd take that, wouldn't you? Really saying that, but uh, you know we didn't lose. We didn't lose anything else. Uh, no, it's it's disappointing to know that we've been at the mostly up the top all the way through the season, and now uh, we've fell out uh, for reasons. You know, dropping points against teams like Greys and um, early on in the season, and uh, like I say, it's just consistency, really. Yeah. Kettering this weekend. Do you expect another fight? From Kettering, that's their game, yeah. You could see when they come early on in the season, they was just happy with the draw. I've, I've never saw nothing like in the first five minutes of games where teams are slowing it down and kicking the ball out. First five minutes to, to hold on to a draw. So uh, I think we're going to expect a lot more of that, really. Uh, but we're going to go down there with our fighting spirit and uh, get as many points as we can from the last few games. Andy Burgess has labelled Kettering as a team that have overachieved this year. Would you agree with that? I wouldn't listen to anything Andy Burgess says, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, they play their tactics well. You know, they they don't say that they're anything special, but they do what they do very well. They just shut up shop. Uh, they play they play for the points. You know, they don't they don't go out to change change the world, so to speak. But uh, they play their tactics, and hopefully we can uh, counteract that and uh, go down there and smash them in. Does everyone ignore Andy Burgess? No comments. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get back to the football then. Okay, you're the man in, in the possession of the shirt in a minute. We've we've talked to both Andy and David this morning about another strike partner you've got. It's, he's called Jake Spate. A very influential player, isn't he, at this club, especially when he comes in the, in the 93rd minute and arguably rescues Mansfield from what would have been a defeat. He's like me, he wouldn't like you saying influential player. He wants that shirt from the start, uh, as myself, Duffy... Uh, and then the rest, the rest of the stroke force we have. But, uh, the role he's played at the club so far has been fantastic. You, you can't knock it really. You can see when he comes on and the fans are buzzing off him. Uh, credit to him really and, and what he does. Uh, he just needs to uh, sort his little knocks and niggles out. And then uh, next season, uh, the competition for places is going to be even even stronger if we're all fully fit. So it's exciting times I think as a stroker. It's, it's what I thrive off the competition. Uh, but like I say, I, I do want that shirt as well. In that last response you've just given me there, you've already talked about next season. In your mind, is this season already over? No, no chance. No, I, I only look at it next game to next game. Uh, like I say, seven games coming up, I want to get as many points as I can. And then personal goals as well, I want to score as much as I can. But talking about stroke forces and spaces, niggles and that next season will be the one where we, we're all fighting for places and uh, trying to get in front of each other, yeah. What is your target for the end of this season? You've got a fair few games left. You know, yeah. injuries. You know, let's hope none come your way. But if you if you do stay fit, do stay on the side. What sort of target do you want to to get at the end of this season? I've never labelled it with a target, for, even from the start of the season, because you you never know what's going to happen. You don't know what to expect. Uh, but like I say, twelve goals at the moment with the games I've played. Uh, I'm over the moon with. Yeah, I want more. I wanted to play more. Uh, it doesn't happen, does it? And you've got to take what you can. I'm just uh, pleased with how it's gone, and hopefully, I can I can push on and uh, notch a few more. If you keep a full head of hair, will, will that help? Do you think? <laughs> I don't know. I'm receding a bit, so uh, we'll keep on between me and you. Who's got the shall we say thinnest hairline in the Mansfield Thinnest Tower hair. Well. I know Blair Sturrock's up there. That's uh, receding. We call him Reese. Uh, Soms is Soms is growing his now. I don't know why. Uh, I think he's trying to make an impact, trying to get himself back in. I think, I think the Mohawk's on the horizon for him. But, uh, 
you know, Steve out of the mini view is uh, is key on. <laughs> Thank you. In terms of in terms of uh, Alan Marriott, I imagine you'd all, all want a piece of Alan Marriott's magic, you know, being his age and still looking fifteen. That's exactly what my mum says. She says, I want your keeper. I said, why? She says, he looks 16, he ain't old enough to play. I said, mum, he's the oldest in the squad. But, uh, yeah, yeah, he's a good lad, Al. He's, yeah. Brilliant, we'll leave it that. Cheers. Huh? Thank you. Cheers, guys. Uh, in terms of the players in that game, Jake Spate, we obviously grabbed the headlines in the 93rd minute mm. there. He, I spoke to him after the game, he's saying that the surgeons told him he needs to do a little bit more rehab. What's his situation looking ahead to, to this game at the weekend? Well, we've... we've uh, Jake monitored, of course. We've had this for the last, let's say, seems like forever now because you know you're having to look after the little fella. Um, he needs to strengthen his knee, which is fine, and, but it, is, it seems to be sound and it seems to be um, structurally f perfect. So, you know, when you're a young man and you've had that type of uh, injury before, and you, you know, in the back of your mind, you've always got a doubt. We've got to try to help him extract that doubt. He's, he's physically fit, he works extremely hard, immensely hard. Um, so it's a case of managing the situation. It's not an ideal situation for the fella, but he wants to play. I want him to play, but you have to try and manage the situation. And that's what we've had to do for a long period now. Um, I think once Jake gets the doubt in his mind that, he's, he's, um, that he might break down, then obviously um, he can go out of the freedom to maybe put in longer performances. So at the moment it's... Um, we get 20 minutes out of the fella like he does. I'm happy with that. But if there's a doubt in it, I won't play him. And if, I, if it means leaving him out, then I have to do that. To use a phrase you've used many a time in the past, you're going to keep him in cotton wool then, I imagine? It's got to be, because the strengthening comes from doing the, the, the core stability work and certainly the, um, the functional work with, with Jake to strengthen the, the, the area that he needs to be strengthened. So, yeah, if it means wrapping him up, he's not going to lose any fitness levels. He works very hard on that, and there's also plenty of types of CV work to, to maintain the, the high standards that we expect. Can you just give us an update on, on Luke Jones and his progression with his injury? Luke, I'm very pleased he, he stepped up his rehabilitation this week. He's got the all clear, so he's um, pleased he's, he's started um, work on, on the bike. And then we hope for maybe Monday him to start doing a little bit um, more football related work. And uh, We'll see, but we're hopeful maybe two more weeks uh, for Luke. And but again, it's. Um, a position where we must make sure that we don't rush him back because he's a valuable member of the squad. And where's Ollie Hotchkiss? Because I imagine that injury more than more than most has been frustrating because he's been been almost plagued at times this year, hasn't he, by by injury? It seems to have been one thing after the other for the little fella, and he's um, there's at times when he's been very down about it. He's a young man maturing, and he needs to understand about the ethics of football. But he's you know he's a cracking person. Uh, Ollie, we know what a technically very gifted footballer he is. Um, he's a tough, he came out of Leeds obviously for a young man and, but we're delighted to have him here and then it seems to have been in the last um, two months where he's got back himself into a position of fitness he was meant to be training Monday, he trained and then he broke down again so um, we're frustrated, it was a, a completely different injury and he's got a calf strain and he seems to have been um, very unfortunate Let's move on to Kettering now this weekend the first and obvious question to you David is is what do you make of their home form? Um, I think what when I think when um, Mr. Cooper left, I think people thought they were going to fall away, but he didn't take the players; only took one with him, really. So they've maintained a good standard of football. They've obviously been um, in the higher part of the league for a number of years without without going up. So that they know what the, the, the division's about. They've got some very talented players, but with regards to the home form, um, it's been erratic, and certainly, but we won't understand. Um, on any, any given day, teams can step up their performance, but likewise, our away form has been very, very good. In that sense, then, you should be going into this game with a lot of confidence. OK, frustrated after Tuesday night, but with a side playing at home who have only won five games at home all year, I believe, and, and with your away form and current away form, all the cards are in, in, in your favour, aren't they? The well, I feel that, I feel that whether it's Kettering, Oxford, Liverpool or Man United, we, we want to go there and be successful, and I feel that... We've set that um, game plan up this year to go away and, and win as many games as we can on the road because I felt I think Mansfield Town's um, away record uh, last season was pretty poor. So we've changed that completely and um, I feel that we've uh, certainly got a number of wins this season. And the, the pleasing aspect, uh, David, is that we've scored a, a, a higher number of goals. Is that because the shackles, shackles are off away from home? 
I think there's it's one that, that the other teams have to come out and try to win the game, which makes a change. Um, and secondly, I believe that we've got that mentality. We have that mentality in, in every game that we want to go out and win. I don't go there. At the, I won't be asking my goalkeeper to kick the ball out in the first minute and, and time waste. So um, I think um, you know Ian Harper um, will know that we go down there and we, we've got a fighting spirit amongst us. I think the the Kettering manager will also know that Mansfield Town need three points out out of this game, don't they? Yeah, so Kettering. Um, so it should prove to be a very good game. We feel that um, if we can get the three points there and. Um, a lot of the top teams are, are playing each other in the forthcoming weeks, so it could be interesting.